Uh, we have this story, which is just the other element of fascism, specifically targeting women and tracking women that drive on highways in Texas, trying to catch women who are leaving the state for reproductive health care or any other reason. Gestapo tactics have begun. Fascism's here, chat. Especially if you're in a southern state. It's here. Uh, the election and you take the House and you uh, now convert all the committees that you have to investigating various aspects of the President of the United States, then uh, your lifeblood has to be to react to stories. So you're going to see more stories planted so that all these committees can have uh, right. uh, a lot of work to do. And I, I think this is just more of the same. And I think we can expect more of this because, um, quite honestly, uh, the electorate in some places is putting more and more progressives and self-described socialist in positions. And uh, ironically, uh, years ago, when I first got into the FBI, one of the missions of the FBI in its counterintelligence efforts was to try and keep these people out of government. They admit it! But again, good FBI? My name is... <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, chat. Got any debate perverts in the chat? DSA debate. This story is an important one to get out there. This It's a story written in the... Um, uh, Washington Post on Friday, I think it was. Yeah. And um, it's just another, another sort of element, which I think should be alarming, both in terms of um, the question of abortion rights, but also the extent to which um, people will, uh, or states, or these red states, will go to inhibiting people from exercising their right to get an abortion in another state. The fervor of the anti-abortion activists, their fixation, their obsession, that is key to understanding how we have to combat this here. I don't know how you can't contemplate this as being authoritarian. I mean, even if you are one of those people who believe that um, the Supreme Court was wrong in finding a right to abortion to people and that it should be a state's decision. There really is no analog to what we're seeing in Texas now as far as inhibiting the ability of someone to exercise their rights in a different state. Like even in the context of, of marriage equality, um, there was a lot of times like, there was an era where you could get married in Massachusetts. That marriage wasn't necessarily uh, recognized by the federal government in terms of the federal rights that you would get as a married person. And it's you could go to Texas and you would not get any of the marital support, or I should say rights that you get as a married person. They wouldn't recognize your marriage. But the idea that you're going to open up someone uh, to liability for having gotten married in Massachusetts. There was no analog for that. And let's just be clear, too. The people in, say, the Republican Party who say this should be less left to the states, abortion should be, they're the equivalent of never Trumpers in the Republican Party because they're not really relevant to what we're talking about here. Um, I'm sure there are people who have that sincerely held belief but they are not the power players or the people driving legislation. The reality is, is that it's a fundamentalist organized effort, and that's the focus, not the very small numbers of the people that sincerely believe that. Because even the people that say they believe that, then they'll just be Lindsey Graham and introduce a federal ban as soon as you have the ability to do so. Um so this story is uh, specifically about the town of Llano, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, in Texas. And the thing about uh, Llano, Texas, is that I think it's at an intersection of a couple of highways. And uh, this is important because what the local ordinance purports to do is that if you are a woman driving on uh, this th the roads in that town headed towards another state where uh you still have an, a right to an abortion or if you're driving someone to another state and you go through that town 
their local ordinance makes it illegal to do so. And they allow for any private citizen to sue a person or organization they suspect of violating the ordinance. And I want to make something... Isn't this fucking bad? I mean, like, we talked about this when this law went into place, but there was no real response by the Democrats other than vague gestures toward reproductive rights. And clear, they're going to get pro bono legal representation mm -hmm. from right-wing groups that are going to provide this lawyer. So there is absolutely no obstacle for them to bring any suit willy-nilly. This is the third city so far, by the way, in Texas to do this. So if you are a, a traveling on uh, highways such as Interstate 20 and Route 84, which head towards New Mexico, uh, where abortion remains legal, and new clinics have opened to accommodate Texas women, according to the Washington Post, uh, you're in legal jeopardy. And this is their end around. The, the Supreme Court never took issue with, uh, with this type of, like, deputization of people to sue. That was uh, essentially, you know, uh, Missouri had a law like this. Idaho began to impose criminal penalties on anybody who helps a minor leave a state. We're going to see more and more of this. They're also in Texas targeting areas around major airports like Dallas and um, Austin. Um, Lana was kind of closer to Austin, I believe. But So if, you, if you're in a small town, and the reason why they're targeting towns, or I should say, and the targeting is happening, obviously, by right-wing groups, you get a town of 4,000 people, and maybe there you drive through that town if you're on any given uh, interstate highway, or uh, you touch the uh, airport in any way, or you surround the airport, much easier to go in there for a, uh, a, a rural town that's supportive, let's say, of Trump, spend a little bit of money, get that ordinance on the books. You're certainly going to see that money come back uh, through the, you know, the donations that are going to come from those people who win their lawsuits. Um, this, is, this is what the game plan is. And we hear a lot of talk about authoritarianism. hear a lot of candidates talk about climate change and covid being about tracking you and oh yeah inhibiting you like well we hear a lot hear about states rights talking about this well i mean i, I guess i you know uh the every state should have the ability to allow for abortion and also the constitution protects your right to travel but some of the stuff they're they're looking into to make this uh a law is the man act a 1910 federal law yeah. which is about you know Trafficking women for across Stopping state lines. women yeah. from engaging in prostitution or debauchery. Just to give people a sense of like how on the nose these folks are. It really is about controlling women and the, the, st the statutes they're citing to engage in this uh, and people who can get pregnant. The statutes they're uh, citing in this instance to, to as the undergirding of their uh, what they want to do uh, backs that up as well. <laughs> it's um, foundational. And so, uh, you know, it remains to be seen whether this is constitutional, but it's hard to imagine that the Supreme Court is going to overturn something like this. Um, and it's also unclear, like, you know, whether um, it will rise to that, but we'll see. And by the way, all those people that made, like, process-based arguments about abortion saying they should have gone through the legislature instead of through the courts, um, I'm glad that the process was at the forefront of people's minds as opposed to the rights, <laughs> because it was, you know, it was not it, that's, something Emma, that's liberals. Liberals don't care about the consequences. They they worship a fucking inorganic machine. Do oh, the, oh, the constitute the process is so oh, bipartisanship. We love it. It doesn't matter what the result of the bipartisanship is. It's the fact that you did the bipartisanship. Do you understand? When Joe Biden said he, he doesn't want the Democrats to win by too much because that would be harmful to bipartisanship, he was being honest. He doesn't value, for example, you having a home. Do you know that solar panels in the United States, like getting solar panels in the United States is 40% more expensive than it is in Europe right now? Like, Do you understand how much you're getting fucked over right now? China panel bad!
we have an overwhelming i mean solar is is overwhelmingly gougy in america fucking sad man and that's with a democrat president <sighs> things you're not able to pass through the legislature because of all of the institutional pressure and opposition to it and abortion is one of those things and the, it, it was done away with but the, that's that only underscores how strong the opposition is not the the way that the right was secured and this was and, and i guess lastly the the bottom line is this was fairly predictable of course. Um, and this is where this is headed. And they're not going to stop with abortion. They're going to move on to birth control. They're not going to stop with states banning it. I mean, this is a de facto, this is a de facto federal ban. If you are from Texas, right? I mean, it is a de facto federal ban if you're from Texas. And uh, this is just setting the baseline for what Republicans are going to seek if they're in a position to have control over the three branches of the federal government. That's what we're going to see. And they're not going to stop with this in the same way that they are not going to start, stop with uh, anti-trans legislation. They're moving on to trying to challenge um, uh, Oberfell. And uh, this is this is just the way they roll. Their, their agenda is very explicit and it is not negotiable because this is coming out of a fundamentalist, a religious fundamentalist mindset, even and, and regardless of whether those who are practicing it are religious fundamentalists themselves, they have adopted a religious fundamentalist mindset and that's what's driving the agenda. So there is no compromise. They're, they're it is just a question of the pace in which they move forward to inhibit the rights of people who um well Sam, but are, did they follow the process did they technically follow the process well then in that case it's fine are not towing a religious fundamentalist line in terms of what sexuality uh is supposed to be what uh, individual rights are supposed to be. That's what, that's it. Bottom line. And, uh, you know, we know from uh, Stephen Crowder, Texas, no fault divorce state. <laughs> Maybe they're coming for that next, making sure that uh, women don't have rights in the, those ways that they can be trapped by pregnancies and certain maybe abusive marriages. Um, and just notice how like their interstate fix, uh, uh, you know, say, uh, there are other laws you mentioned marriage but like for example in some states sports betting on your phone is legal say you wanted to cross the border from one state to another to place a bet on your phone and then come back are they are they really cracking down on that are they no because as we understand the stuff that they're targeting is all about controlling women um and controlling sexuality whether it be for gay people or or women as well all right we're going to uh um We'll, we'll, you know, we'll keep you updated on uh, any new laws in that respect. And that's why, Chad, I advocated for Joe Biden having an actual plan to overtake and uh, supplant the conservative Supreme Court. Because if we don't do that, this country is going to continue to deteriorate down the fascist pipeline, which we have so clearly demonstrated today.